Hey guys, this is Mallory, and today I'm going to be taking you through how to print and then bind your favorite fan fiction. Let's get started. Okay, so first step in any good project is to gather materials. Starting off with the cutting materials, you'll want a standard craft scissors, possibly even a precision scissors as well, depending on some of the detailing you're interested in doing for decorations. Um, a paper cutter um, and or a box cutter would be useful because there are times when cutting through sheets or cardboard is necessary. And you may also even want to use a um, paper cutter where you can lay it down and have the sheets cut perfectly. Okay, the next thing you want to prepare are adhesives. Um, so for glue, you could use fabric glue, uh, PVA glue, um, probably even Elmer's glue would be fine. And then for most of these, it'll, it'll be nice to have some sort of dish, whether that be a paint dish or some sort of dish to put the glue in and then having a brush, whether it's a paint brush or a, like a horsehair brush made for glue um, that you can then dip into the glue and use it to swipe it onto the pages and binding. All right, up next, got to prepare the materials for printing. So some type of printer, um, I have a Canon inkjet printer. Um, I recommend a printer that can do double-sided printing. It will make your life a lot easier than if you have to like print all the odd pages and then filter them back through the right direction and print all the even ones, especially when, when you're printing a typeset and you've got like two sheets on each side. So um, a double-sided printer would ultimately be best. Um, and then the kind of paper you want to use is kind of up to you. Just make sure, making sure it's like acid-free. Um, I like parchment paper um, because it's a little bit thicker, it's a little more durable, um, and a little nicer, and it feels a little bit more like a quality book. So to actually bind the book pages together, we need sewing supplies. So um, you'll need a sort of puncture device. Um, you don't need the official kind that comes with book binding kits, which is that wooden instrument with the needle end in the images here. Um, you could just use a tack, honestly. Um, you also don't need like bone um, paper creaser pressers, um, but they are nice, especially if you're doing a lot of pages. It you know gets it nice and smooth and it saves your fingers. Um, you don't need a curved needle, but I think it's a lot better than a straight needle if you can get a hold of one. You don't need waxed thread, but waxed thread is not going to tangle as easily, so that's a benefit. And it might be nice to have some binder clips just to keep things in place um, if you're having a hard time with the sewing. Okay, so to actually make a hardcover book, um, my preference is to just take a hardcover off of a different book. You can use an old book and cut it off. Or I actually was able to order a big stack of just hardcovers from old books off of Etsy for like $18, I think, for 40 of them. So um, that's the absolute easiest thing to do. If you want, though, you can use cardstock and like make the cardboard shaping of your book. Uh, cover. Um, and then you'll want some sort of covering for it, most likely. Um, and I, a thin fabric works well. I like a thin pleather, like a leather look. Um, and you can just get that at like Joanne Fabrics or any fabric store. If you are blessed to have a Cricut, you can absolutely use that and some heat transfer vinyl to design your front cover of your uh, book binding and it will look amazing, but I have multiple other methods that you can use as well if you don't have a Cricut handy. A second option for decorating your front cover is to use hot pens or heat transfer pens. Um, the brand I have and like is, is called Quill um, and they simply heat up a metal tip and you take foil, transfer foil, put it over the top of your book, uh, leather or pleather is what I was using, and you put the tip of the hot pen to it and it will actually transfer the foil onto it. Um, one way you can make sure you're getting the design you want instead of just freehanding it is to just take plain black ink uh, as a stamp and just stamp the design and then just go over that with your quill. Um, and so you can see uh, there are some examples of me practicing. Um, you definitely wanna practice before you do this on a real book cover. Option number three for decorating your book binding is I think the easiest, which is to just use stickers, uh, letter stickers, decal stickers, you know, border stickers, sticker images, um, whatever your heart desires. Uh, one pro tip here is if you are going to go the sticker route, that's where that uh, super pristi uh, pristine scissors might come in handy. So you can trim around the border of the sticker. So any kind of clear plastic edging is trimmed away so that they don't look like stickers, so that they look more like uh, they could be an iron on decal, for example. 
a fourth option for cover art is to just use pre-existing iron-on designs and letters. This is the one I'm going to be teaching about during today's video, um, but for materials, I purchased a iron-on decal from Amazon. I got some iron-on letters. Um, I got my iron handy and, or anything that can transfer heat and also um, some eight and a half by 11 printer paper specifically so that you can print whatever design you want onto heat transfer paper and then iron that. So that's what I'm gonna go through today your own fan fiction. So if you don't already read fan fiction and have some picked out, um, I really like Archive of Our Own. It's a fan created, fan run nonprofit um, that's very popular and has a lot of fan fiction on it. Um, and the one I'm going to be showing today as an example is called Draco Malfoy and the Mortifying Ordeal of Being in Love by Is This Self Care. Uh, this is a super popular fan fiction. Um, it has, you know, one and a half million readers. Um, it's 200,000 words, which just for context is basically two full volume books if you print it. Um, and what's cool about this one is because it's so popular, there are lots of free typesets that were already created by fans that I can use for this project. And there's also a ton of art that's been created by fans and embedded in this. So lots of things to utilize. Um, of these free typesets, there are a number that were made and they're all available for people to use for their own, you know, personal libraries. Um, I'm going to be using this one and in it, you know, usually the creator will include information. So basically once this is in a book, it would be 672 pages, which for like a standard volume is big. So I'm going to have this be two volumes. Um, the number of actual pieces of paper though, that you need to print onto is 168 because each piece of paper will have four book pages on it. Signatures are basically chunks of pages that get bound together. So this creator has eight pages in every chunk or every signature of this binding, and there's 21 in total. So each volume is gonna get, one will get 10 signatures and the other will get 11 that get bound together. And here's the big old PDF. Um, now this, the one thing that this creator didn't do, and it might be because like maybe my double-sided printer just is different than other people's, but you'll notice that as you flip through, all the pages are right side up. Also, don't be alarmed by the fact that the pages don't seem to make any sense in their progression. Um, suddenly we're on two and 19 and three and 18 and that's normal, it's supposed to be like that. Um, but what I actually had to do for this to accommodate my printer was I had to um, actually flip all the odd page or all the even pages, I guess, to be upside down. And the reason I had to do that was so that when it printed out of my double-sided printer and I actually folded the sheets, um, they were all facing the correct direction. So that is something that um, I will uh, explain a little bit more in detail. But this is just a matter of finding your own typeset. Now, if a typeset does not already exist for your fan fiction, you can create your own. There are videos out there about how to create them. It's totally doable. And maybe you even like using certain art um, yourself, but generally speaking, it's a lot easier if there's already one that exists. Here is a wonderful example of how if I hadn't flipped every other page when the pages were actually folded, um, it wouldn't read like a book correctly uh, because some of them would be, the words would be upside down on some of the pages. So uh, just so you kind of get a visual for what I mean about the importance of making sure that the way that your printer prints uh, works for that typeset's alignment. Might I humbly suggest that you practice printing a few pages to start with, not the entire, the entire typeset, and that you also practice on regular printer paper rather than your nicer parchment paper, uh, lest you print hundreds of pages that are incorrectly formatted and have to throw all of that in the recycling. Once all of your pages are printed, you can begin folding them. Don't worry too much about which direction to fold them because the page numbers are probably going to be all over the place, which is kind of confusing. And if you, when you're putting the signatures together, if you realize that you, you know, folded one the wrong way, you can simply just refold it the opposite direction. The crease that you already made is going to really nicely just fold back on itself. So it's really easy to correct that. Um, yeah, so just paying attention to how many sheets are in each signature. Remember that my signatures each had eight sheets. So once I put eight together with the pages, um, you know, numerically consecutive, uh, I would find that the set was done and I would, you know, crease the whole thing together and then work on my next signature of eight folded pages. 
So you've got all of your signatures folded and now it's time to begin the process of sewing. So what you can do is just start by taking one of your signatures and you can either use a ruler or my um, like self-healing cutting mat here just happens to um, have uh, measurements on it so I can measure and I mean this is a piece of printer paper so it's you know it's eight and a half like that I already know eight and a half by eleven right so it's eight and a half um, but what we want to do is we want to fit in the middle so eight and a half divided by two is you know four point two five so on here this is four point two five that's that dot and I'm gonna put a little mark on the spine here that's the middle and what you want to do is you want to do one inch marks to either side of that. And you're gonna do three dots on this side and three dots on this side. So I'm actually just gonna shift this a little because I know I just want one inch. So one, two, three. And then same thing on the other side, one inch marks, one, two, three. Okay. Now I did that on the first top signature. So what you're gonna do is Put all your signatures together and this is where you know maybe you want to use a binder clip or something but um essentially let's see if i can get a better angle here let me see um what's easiest instead of measuring them all separately is just to take a ruler and hold it along the edge of where you made that little mark see if I can't it's a little hard to show but I'll show it once I flip it so you're gonna take your pencil and just pull it straight up the side so that you get that same spots mark all the way across on all the signatures and so you're gonna do that on each of those little markings you made all the way down again I will show you what this looks like in a second. Alrighty. And there's that one. And one more. Okay. So now all of the signatures have even markings. Once all of the spines of your signatures have their markings, um, you can take a book binding awl if you have one that's that sharp pointy object pictured or a tack works just as well or anything really sharp um, and you want to puncture through each of those marks um, and you'll do each signature one at a time so basically you're puncturing you know how my signatures are eight pages so eight pages at a time um, you want to make sure you have something underneath there to protect whatever surface you're using, you know, a cork board or several layers of cardboard or um, something to protect your countertop. And you will do all of the signatures with those holes. All right, so we're ready to sew our signatures together. We've got our needle. Again, a curved needle works best, but a regular needle will work. We've got our waxed thread, which is best in book binding, but you can use regular thread. It just might tangle a little more easily. Get yourself, you know, a couple of feet of thread ready to go. Don't worry about if you don't have, think you have enough, you can always uh, tie off where you're at and thread a new one, even in the middle of binding. So you're gonna thread your needle. And um, in this example, I just tie a single knot because I'm worried about it getting too thick to go through the um, little puncture holes, but uh, you know, it will loosen over time. So um, you can certainly do more than one if you want. But on the back end, we are gonna tie a couple of knots. So it's a little bit of a bigger um, knot because we don't want it to go through the hole. So that's what we're gonna do at the end. All right, so you're gonna start with your bottom signature and you're gonna open her up and you are going to want to have the exterior knot you just tied on the exterior of the book. Now, I'm actually threading this wrong at first. I'm starting on the inside because I'm 
not thinking about it right. I'm thinking that's going to get the knot on the outside. And I kind of quickly realized that. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> so anyways, to get the knot on the outside, you do want to start threading it from the outside. And there you go. If you are having a really hard time pulling your thread and your needle through the holes, it could be because they're not big enough and you can always, you know, use your little puncture tool um, to make them a little bigger. But yeah, you're going to go then just back through the other side and the next hole. And we're just kind of doing like a snaking pattern. Go back through and out the other side. And again, you'll notice that at this juncture, there are, you know, gaps in the thread that show paper through, and that's normal. That's part of this sort of like snaking stitch we're doing at this time. Now, once you get to the end of this sort of like first snake, you do actually want to go back through and snake the other way so that those gaps where the paper is showing along the spine um, are closed off. So yeah, I'm going to snake back through the other way and you'll see pretty quickly that that gap of paper showing seals off and now there is thread consistently through there. And you can see me periodically here, I'm like tightening my knot. Um, I just added another one there to see if it stays a little bit better. But again, the trade-off is that it's, you can see I'm struggling a little bit more to pull it through. Um, so not as many of these issues with regular thread, but you know, there is a reason this is what's traditionally used for book binding. Uh, the wax does hold itself together pretty well. Um, you know, you're not going to tear the pages as easily because it's a thicker thread. It's not a skinny little thread that might have more of like a cutting effect. All right. And you can see the more thread you use, the more you might have issues with like when you're pulling it through it getting caught on the edges of things. But um, okay, so there's our full snake. Now we do want to end with our knot on the exterior spine. So I'm just going to thread underneath the existing stitch there and just go back through that loop I've just made to create a knot and pull that knot tight. And typically you'll just stick your needle through that same hole then and, and you'll pull until you hear it pop and the knot will come out the other end. Um, but I accidentally pulled a little hard and I popped it off. So um, that's okay. I just tie a little knot here at the end like a little loopy knot around the uh, ex existing exterior knot where my whole thing started. And that's enough to secure it right there. And that's all we really need to do. Okay, so that first signature has been sewn. Now we're going to grab the second to last signature because that was what would come before that one in the book. And we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna start again in the exterior and go in on the top aligned hole and yeah, you kind of once you when you get started, you kind of have to be careful to make sure you're going through all the pages. All right, so now this is where the stitching gets a little bit different. Okay, so I am gonna again go through the second hole, kind of that snake. Okay, of just the signature. But I do have to actually bind it to the first signature. So once I pull it all the way through, you can see me struggling a little bit here. Also the more, you know, the wax does make your hands a little slick over time. So that's another kind of drawback to it. Okay, so now I need to actually bind it to that first thread. So I'm gonna go underneath one side of that thread and then back up through the underside of the thread on the opposite side. So I just did to the right, now I'm gonna do to the left underneath that thread, back up, pull tight, and now I've just drawn a nice little loopy loop around that first signature's tie there. And then I'm gonna go back up through that same exact hole, 
that I just went down. And that is how we're gonna do it all the way across for this second signature, binding it to the first signature. Okay, we're gonna go down and out to the exterior. And then we're gonna use our needle to go under one side of that long thread stitch and then under but up the other side. So again, we're pulling like a little loopy around that first stitch and we're binding the signatures together right in that spot. And then we're gonna go back up through that same hole we just came down. I'm gonna do that all the way across on this second signature. Now we're not gonna do it quite that way on the other remaining signatures, but it, it's close to this stitch. So, you know, the first stitch is mostly just like a snake and then another snake. This one is like a snake, but we do a loop around each signature at the base right there to make sure that we're actually binding the two together. So it's just like a little loop. And then once we draw our little loop, we go back up through the same hole that we came down in. Once we get to binding signatures like three, four, five, et cetera, however many more there are, um, we're gonna do it just a little bit differently, but it's a very similar principle and those are all gonna be done the same way for the rest of the binding. So again, if you ever run out of thread, you could just tie off at the exterior because remember the exterior of the book is where you know, that's where it's going to be glued. It's going to be not showing. It's going to be on the interior spine of the hardcover. So anytime you have to tie off, you can do it on the outside and then you can just start a new thread, you know, tie a little knot at the end, make sure the knot's on the outside and start anew. Okay, now as we get to kind of the end here, I'm um, doing, again, my little loop all the way through, back up through the hole that I came down. And now we're on our last one. So last one, you are gonna go you know, back down into the exterior, but now you don't have stitching on both sides to do a perfect little loop around. So you're only gonna use the stitch to the left, the, the one that, there's only one to work with, you know? So you're gonna go under the stitch to the one side, pull it tight, and then go, and then you're gonna stop, okay? Now, Every signature after this is gonna get sewed on a little bit differently. So I'm gonna do one more layer for you to, to demonstrate how that one's done and then you'll do the same thing for every layer after that. So third layer and beyond. All right, so I'm gonna go again from the outside to the inside. We're always starting at the outside, going into the inside. And it's good to check again, before you, you know, start sewing a signature that the pages line up. So that is indeed where it goes. You can see, I just made the hole a little bit bigger there. I was a little bit aggressive with it, but I was having a hard time getting it through. Um, okay. And then you're going to go back out to the interior to the exterior. So you don't do any looping at first there now. Okay. Instead of using that first line, we're never going to use that first thread again. We're just going to go around the little vertical set of lines we created with the last signature so see how there's just i'm going just like truly to the side there there's just that single um, set of vertical lines where i created a sort of a stitch i'm just going to go around that so it's basically like going around the trunk of a tree and then still back up through the one i came down so it's a similar process but instead of going like under and up these two you know horizontal threads we're just going to do a quick little jaunt around the vertical lines there so see, I'm just doing a quick scoop. That's where this scooping, you know, curved needle really helps. I'm just doing a little scoop around it and pull tight. And then I'm gonna go again, back up through the hole I came through. So we're never gonna use that set of horizontal stitches from the first signature again. We're always gonna bind every other signature to the set of vertical lines from the previous signature stitch. We're just gonna go under and behind it and around and just tie right around its little vertical trunk there. And then right back up through the same hole that we came through. And that's how you'll do it. You're just gonna do that from all the way to the end and then the same thing uh, for all the remaining signatures. And then at the end there, 
you're just going to want to make sure that at the end your you know thread comes out the exterior side so that when you tie off your final little knot uh, all those knots and little threads and stuff are on the exterior and will be hidden with the spine. Step eight is we are going to put glue along the spine of our newly sewn together signatures and I'm just using PVA glue um, and doing a nice thick coat along the edge there. You'll see that I use cardboard to protect the book from you know other things and, and kind of keep it contained. Um, I don't have a book press. If you had a book press, you could use it here. But I just think heavy objects, heavy books, something along those lines works just fine. And you're gonna set that to press the pages nice and tightly together and let that dry, probably for at least a few hours, if not. Longer. All right, so it's time to prepare the hardcover. So the first thing you wanna do is cut down that hardcover because it is probably too big for your book pages. You can do this by placing your bound pages inside the cover and simply using a pencil to draw a border for where the pages end. From there, if you look at the second image in the sequence, you would um, cut the excess off. I used my handy dandy uh, like heavy duty paper cutter. You could also use a box cutter. And that third image in is that reduced size to it. From there, you'll wanna cut a piece of fabric. I used my pleather and I, I cut it about one inch bigger on each side than the book cover. And then I simply cut the corners diagonally so that when it folds, it folds nicely. From there, the image to the bottom right is me adding glue to all of the fabric edges that are showing, pressing those in, pressing those down, and then I put, I closed the book cover and put some heavy objects, law books on them um, to dry nice and tight. All right, so as I mentioned earlier in the materials, you can get some super inexpensive little corner protectors for your book binding project. Um, and these are great. They're super easy to bend. I just got them off of Amazon and they'd really just make the book look really fancy. So um, they go on each corner. These little metal pieces fold up and down really easily. So you actually don't need a hammer to put them on, but I chose to use a hammer just to kind of make sure they were nice and snug to my book. And they just, as you can see, add a nice like touch to your book binding and make it look really fancy. Okay, it is time to actually glue your typeset to your hardcover. So the first thing you wanna do is get a hold of some kind of piece of cardstock or thicker paper. I'm actually just gonna use a piece of my parchment paper that I misprinted on, which is why it's blank on one side. And essentially, this is gonna be the piece that sits between the hardcover and your typeset. So it's kind of that protective layer. So I want the blank sides to be visible. So, you know, the sides that I misprinted on, I'm gonna keep outward and I'm just gonna fold it in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be gluing one side of this to the last page of my typeset, and I'm going to be gluing the other side to the hardcover so that it sits as a nice protective layer between, and here's my typeset, the hardcover and the typeset. So in that first image, all I've done is I've used that um, parchment paper that I'm using as a protective piece, and I've used some cardboard bitlets to protect the pages from each other so the glue doesn't seep through. So this sort of protective page, I have separated with cardboard from the typeset um, and simply covered it in glue and added the typeset to it. You do the same thing on the back side. And in step two, you can see now that I've got that protective piece glued to both sides of my typeset, um, it's time to actually glue now the whole typeset to the hardcover. So we are gonna use our PVA glue all over the interior of our hardcover. I try to not get all the way to the edge just to leave a little bit of space for protection. And in step three, you can see I took that typeset, I kept those protective like cardstock pieces in there just to keep glue from seeping. And I stuck it right into my hardcover and closed it, which you see in step four. From there, I just took some of my heavy law school textbooks and placed them on top where they can sit and press and allow that glue to dry as a nice snug tight binding. So the decorating method I'm going to show you today is how to decorate your book cover with heat transfer paper. So you could just order a design off of the internet, off Amazon or something that is a heat transfer decal and use that if you find one you like. But um, you can actually really easily just buy some heat transfer paper that's compatible with an inkjet printer, like shown in number one. And 
design what you want on your cover yourself or find something you like and print that off as shown in step two. Step three is just then cutting the design to the shape you want it to transfer. And in step four, you'll see we've got our different layers. We've got my iron to the right heating up. There's my book. There is the transfer design. I've peeled off the back of the transfer paper film, which is to the right of it. And then over the top is a thin layer of parchment paper that typically comes with these kits. Step five, you're going to iron on your design with the parchment paper acting as a barrier. Um, these kinds of kits typically tell you how long to do it for. Mine was like 60 to 120 seconds of heat. Um, and it also tells you like how hot to make it. Um, in this case, I did like a wool setting uh, level of heat, like a medium heat on my iron. And then step six shows you the final project of that fully transferred onto my book. And then I honestly just used two smaller um, rose stickers uh, and I trimmed around them so that they didn't look like stickers. I trimmed away any kind of clear edging and then stuck those on for a little bit more decoration. And that is the back of my book. And that is it. What you do from here on out is totally up to your creative license. Um, you can continue to use heat transfer to, to add more layers. So um, that middle example that says, uh, that has the anatomical heart, that is just heat transfer decal uh, as a base and then heat transfer letters over the top. And then I used a little bit of leather glue, I'm sorry, leather paint and a fine tipped paintbrush to border the letters. Um, the spine of that one is just to the right of it. I used some heat transfer letters to put the name of the author is a self-care and I also super glued on some uh, pop-up decal roses thanks for watching everybody I'm looking forward to creating more book binding tutorials in the future and hopefully they will get better as I get better at the craft myself 